Hi, I'm Michael, and this is California. And today we see unprecedented increases in the cost of living. Things like transportation, housing, and food have all dramatically increased over the last few years. Especially this year, we've seen a really big increase in the cost of food as a result of the lockdown as well as the pandemic. And these increases especially hurt Americans who are on fixed incomes, usually those through Social Security retirement or railroad retirement benefits. And usually on a year-to-year -year basis, both the Social Security Administration and the Railroad Retirement Benefits Administration will provide a cost of living adjustment or a COLA to help compensate for the increase in cost in living. But this has not always been the case. And today we're going to talk about the Social Security Administration's cost of living adjustment, how it started, the history of it, and why there may not be an increase this year. Now, before we do that, if you like this information, if you find it interesting, if you find it helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. So what is a COLA and why is it necessary? So the COLA, the cost of living adjustment, typically applies to folks who are on social security benefits. So survivors, social security disability, social security retirement, or SSI. And the reason why there's a COLA is because if you contend to get your social security benefits at a fixed amount, it would be continually eroded by general inflation, or for example, the cost of healthcare that's going up, the rising cost of housing the rising cost of food or the rising cost of transportation. All those things affect the overall cost of living for somebody who's on fixed benefits. Now, an example of this would be the cost of a candy bar. So if we look at something called the Hershey Bar Price Index, which tracks the cost of Hershey bars over the last however many years, many, many, many years, you can see that in 1974, the cost of a Hershey bar was 15 cents. Now in 2013, that same candy bar is 99 cents. Now essentially these bars are the same, but because of inflation, the cost has gone up. And this happens to most things in our economy. And so if somebody had a fixed income on social security benefits and they did not increase, it would mean that they'd be getting 1974 Hershey's bar monthly benefits, but actually paying 2020 Hershey's bars costs which are still only a dollar, by the way. This would mean that they would only have enough money to buy really 15% of the Hershey bar if they continued to receive the fixed benefit that they had from 1974 and if it never went up. So how is the COLA calculated? And keep in mind, the COLA can vary greatly from year to year. And it's definitely not guaranteed that there will be a COLA at all every single year. And that's because the COLA is based on something called the CPIW, or the Consumer Price Index for Clerical Workers. And this is essentially the cost of living for clerical workers. It includes costs such as cost of food, cost of housing, and the cost of health care. And what happens is these costs get compared from a three-month period from the previous year to the current year. So if the cost goes up for the same three months, from last year until the current year, it means that the difference that it goes up will be what makes up the COLA. So for example, if someone's CPIW goes up 3% from last year to this year, it means that the COLA will also go up 3%. Now, if the CPIW goes down or does not go up at all, it means that there is not going to be a COLA at all. So essentially, if there is an inflation rate that does go up, then it means that the COLA will go up. But if there is no inflation or it goes down, then it means that there will be no COLA at all. So let's talk a little bit about history for the COLA and how common it is for it to happen or to not happen. And really, up until 1975, it took an act of Congress change benefits for Social Security. So essentially, every time they wanted to increase the benefits for Social Security recipients, they had to get a vote through Congress. And in 1972, as a part of the Social Security amendments, auto colas were set to begin in 1975. And in fact, the first cola was set at 8%, so it was a rather large jump for that first cola. And over the years, there have really been some pretty big jumps in the cola. The largest COLA jump was at 14% in 1980, followed up by 11% in 1981. Now, once we got into 2000s, COLAs so far have really ranged from 0 to 5%. And in fact, in 2010, 2011, and 2016, the COLAs were actually at 0%. 
Now, the way things are shaping up so far, it looks like for 2021, there might be another low year or even a zero year for colas. And that's primarily because of the following economy for those three months they use to test the CPIW as a result of the pandemic. So overall, having a COLA has been a lifesaver for many Social Security beneficiaries. Now, unfortunately, there are still some problems with the COLA. For example, it only compares a three-month period from year to year. So if in that one three-month period there happens to be bad economic results, despite the rest of the year being good, like if there was a short-term pandemic, then it could cause a 0% COLA, even though the actual cost of living has gone up. Additionally, the COLA does not take into consideration the income of the recipient. And this is important because a 3% increase, for example, for someone with a lower Social Security benefit will be much smaller than a 3% increase for somebody with a much higher Social Security benefit. And essentially, that could mean that that 3% may not actually help them keep up with the pace of the cost of living. So needless to say, the COLA is not a perfect system. But for the time being, it's really the primary way that we have to increase someone's Social Security benefits in order to compensate for the increased cost of living. Thank you so much for watching our video and I hope that you found it interesting or helpful or at least useful. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. Also, if you have any comments or questions, leave those down below. We'd love to see your comments and questions and we'll be happy to make a new video or a new post as soon as we can. Now finally, we here at California, we know health insurance. So whether it's covered California or Medicare or private health insurance or Medicaid or Medi-Cal or even health insurance for a small group, we know health insurance. Because I know it can be very complicated sometimes coming out of your work insurance and having to go to private health insurance. Or if you're turning 65 and trying to figure out what are your Medicare options, which plans best fit your needs as well as your budget. And that is exactly what we can do. So if you have questions about your health care, leave those down below. We'll be happy to help you as well. Now, other than that, I am Michael and this is California wishing you a happy, healthy day.